Respected brothers and sisters, continuing with the series of rights in Islam, one of the greatest bounties Allah Azza wa Jal bestowed upon this nation is sending down the Quran, a book which has no ambiguity or confusion in it. A book that is a source of might and honor for those who adhere to it. Allah Azza wa Jal says, لَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا فِيهِ ذِكْرُكُمْ We have certainly sent down a book to you in which is your mention. Ibn Abbas said, your mention is your honor. So it is a source of honor and might to the believers who adhere to it. In addition to it being a means of protection and salvation, both in this world, during times of temptation and trials, and in the hereafter. There are many rights for the Qur'an and they vary in rank. The most important, the first and foremost is believing in it. As a matter of fact, a person is not even considered a Muslim without fulfilling this right. Allah Azza wa Jal says, يا أيها الذين آمنوا آمنوا بالله ورسوله والكتاب الذي نزل على رسوله. O you who have believed, believe in Allah, His Messenger, and the book He sent down upon His Messenger. Al Qurtubi said, the book is referring to the Quran. Another right of the Quran is to recite the Quran. Allah commanded Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran saying, وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا And recite the Quran with distinct and measured recitation. And it is a command to Muhammad and to his ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after him. And one of the means or some of the means of perfecting recitation or the recitation of the Qur'an is for those who are non-Arabic speakers to learn the Arabic language. Number two is something that's applicable to all types of believers, whether Arabs or non-Arabs, to learn how to recite it, to learn tajweed, the principles and the rules of tajweed. And a third means is reciting it frequently. We have, you see, we have to set a measured amount of the Quran daily to be recited and make it a task that cannot be overlooked or neglected or postponed for any reason. Just like for us, who have jobs cannot say, well, I don't want to work except three hours today. You can't do that. Why? Because simply your employer is not going to allow that. Well, why is it when it comes to Allah? Why is it when it comes to Jannah? Why is it that when it comes to the hereafter and to the real salvation and protection of our souls and bodies, we take it lightly? Oh, well, I didn't have time today. I'll just recite one page, half a page, three pages, half a juzur. But when there's a deadline at the job and you have to work instead of 30, 40 hours a week, you, you work 100 hours a week for multiples of weeks because the employer demands that, you see no issue in that. We have no problems with that. Why? Because that, that's what brings bread on the table.
Another right is to memorize the Qur'an. See, it is enough honor that a slave has the book of Allah in his heart. The words of Allah complete, ready to be recited from any part of the Qur'an at any time he wishes and desires. It is a bliss that many people are deprived of. We all seek to be admitted into Jannah. And we ask Allah the highest levels of Jannah. Will Quran get you to the highest levels of Jannah? The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, on the day of judgment, it will be said to the person who memorized the Quran, Iqra' wartaqi, recite and ascend in levels. وَرَتِّلْ كَمَا كُنْتَ تُرَتِّلُ فِي الدُّنْيَا And recite with distinct and measured recitation as you used to do in dunya. فَإِنَّ مَنْزِلَتَكَ عِنْدَ آخِرَ عِنْدَ آخِرِ آيَةٍ تَقْرَأُهَا For your rank, your level in Jannah will be with the last verse you recite. The Qur'an has more than 6,200 verses. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, on the Day of Judgment, you're reciting. Every verse, you're going a rank higher. As you recite, you go higher. Just think, brothers. Just think, sisters. Which rank would you want to have on that day? Well, the chance is here. We still have the time. And the choice is ours. One thing that's very important to note here is that memorizing the Qur'an is not an obligation. It's a blessing. It's something that's preferable, recommended, but it's not an obligation. Right? What is an obligation is that you memorize enough to be able to pray or use the Qur'an for healing, for ruqyah. However, there's a prize. In addition to high ranks in Jannah, a protection from the hell of fire. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi, classified as sound by Al Albani. He said, if the Quran was to be compiled in a piece of leather, then Allah will not burn it in the fire of hell. That's why Umama radiallahu anhu used to say, Memorize the Qur'an for Allah will not burn with the fire a slave who has the Qur'an memorized in his heart. Isn't this enough? Isn't this motivating for us to memorize the Qur'an? Another right is to reflect upon the Qur'an. See, Qur'an was not revealed for us to read it as someone reads a newspaper. And I'm not going to say a book because many people read books with great attentiveness. Right? They're focused. They want to get the best out of the book. But many of us don't do that with the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal says, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِ A blessed book we have sent down to you, O Muhammad, so that they might reflect upon its verses. As a matter of fact, Allah rebucked those who do not reflect upon the Qur'an. Allah says, 
أفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها Will they not reflect upon the Quran? Or are, they, are there locks upon their hearts? Allah Azza wa Jal is given us the disease and the cure. The disease is having our hearts locked, rusty, hard. And the cure is to recite with reflection and pondering when we are reciting the Qur'an. Ash-Shawkani said, this is evidence that reciting the Qur'an with reflection is an obligation upon the believer. We ask Allah Azza wa to soften our hearts with the Qur'an and to make us amongst those who recite it with reflection and act upon it. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyya mustafa. Thumma amma ba'd. Acting upon the Qur'an. Putting the Qur'an to practice is one of the essential objectives of revealing the Qur'an, and it's one of the rights of the Qur'an. See, the companions used to recite the Qur'an with full readiness to apply what they read or recite and to act upon it. Ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, said, when you recite or hear the saying of Allah, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, then listen attentively because it is either something good that you're commanded to do or something evil that you're commanded to refrain from. And this was the behavior of the companions with the Qur'an. Ibn Umar said, we would not memorize or go beyond memorizing 10 verses of the Qur'an until we learnt its meaning, understood the commands in it, and acted upon it. In the book of an Imam Muslim, When the verse that prohibited consuming intoxicants, alcohol, was revealed, the Prophet ﷺ sent a messenger, one of the companions, to convey his words, saying that this verse has been revealed and Allah Azza wa Jal has made it prohibited. So whoever has any of it must immediately refrain from drinking or selling it. What was the behavior? What was the reaction of the companions? They immediately stopped. Some of the narrations said some of them had their, the, the, the cup of wine or alcohol raised up to their mouths and they immediately put it down. Some had some of it in their mouth, they spit it out. Each went to whatever he had, whether in his house or his shop, and spilt it on the floor, on the ground, to the extent that some of the narrations said the smell of alcohol was smelt in the uh, the streets of Medina for days and days. Some said it was running like creeks between the houses. Can you imagine how much, what is the amount of alcohol that was spilt 
Well, that is putting the verse into action and acting upon it immediately. And that reflects pure hearts and strong faith. Another right is referring to the Quran for judgment. See, referring to the Quran for judgment and making it govern our lives in totality, not certain aspects of the life, but totally govern our lives is a fundamental of, tah of tawheed and faith. Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَفَحُكْمَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ يَبْغُونَ Is it the judgment of the time of ignorance, referring to the pre-Islamic era? Is it the judgment of the times of ignorance they desire? وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا But who is it better than Allah as judge? as a judge. So Allah Azza wa Jal made referring to other than the Quran as an action, as a behavior of the pre-Islamic era. Teaching it to others. See, when you learn the Qur'an, when you learn the meanings of the Qur'an, when Allah blesses you with proper recitation of the Qur'an, it's a tax that you have to convey this knowledge to others. But in return, you'll still be rewarded. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, The best amongst you. You want to be the best amongst the Ummah? Then apply this narration. The best amongst you is he or she who learns the Qur'an and teaches it to others. Another right is honoring, respecting the Qur'an. You see, words and statements derive their importance and their status from the source who stated or said them. And to Allah belongs the loftiest of ranks and examples. When these words are the words of Allah, then what rank would they have? So honoring the Qur'an is a sign of honoring and glorifying Allah, the Almighty, the Exalted. Aspects of honoring the Qur'an is to listen attentively when it's being recited is to be submissive when reciting it, to cry when reciting it, not to recite it, and this is only recommended, not to recite it except in the state of ritual purity, and not to act in any way or form with disrespect, a very common way which many people are heedless of that shows a type of disrespect to the words of Allah Azza wa is what we see in the, in the masajid. We see a person coming and he picks up a mushaf and then he sets it on the floor and then recite the praise to rakaz and then starts reciting the Quran. Are you too lazy to pray and then get up and walk? two, three meters, and pick up a mushaf and go, come back? Quran, raise the rank of anything that was associated with it. Jibreel was the one to bring it down to Muhammad ﷺ and convey it to him, so he became the best of angels. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the one upon whom the Qur'an was sent. He became the best of messengers and prophets. Rather, he became the best of humanity sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Muslim nation 
was the nation upon whom the Quran was revealed and sent down to, they became the best of all nations. Ramadan was the month during which the Quran was revealed, it became the best month of the year. The night of Al Qadr was the night during which the Quran was sent down from the heaven, the Lawh al Mahfud, the preserved template, to the heavens, to the first heaven, and it became the best night, better than in reward, than a thousand months. And the more respect you show to it, the better person you become. <clears throat> One last right I would like to list here is using the Quran for healing. You see, there is nothing wrong with going to doctors. And I'm not against that. But I am also saying, don't neglect using the Qur'an for healing and cure. Because it is a cure. فِيهِ شِفَاءٌ لِلنَّاسِ There in it, there is a healing to people. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was afflicted with magic, Jibreel went, came down with قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذِ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ And he was reciting it as ruqya to the Prophet ﷺ for healing. One of the companions who was on a journey and passed by a group of people, the master of whom or the head of whom was stung by a, a scorpion or by a, a snake, he recited Al-Fatiha seven times and the man stood up as if he was not afflicted with anything. Ibn al-Qayyim said, if people use the Fatiha for treatment properly, meaning with sincerity and full trust in Allah, that he will treat you, he will cure you. Then they will see wonders. He said, I stayed in Mecca for long days, complaining from different types of sicknesses. And no doctor and no treatment availed of anything. Nothing worked. He said, so I resorted to Al-Fatiha and so amazing, amazing results and effects on myself. Finally, brothers and sisters, a warning must be stated here not to abandon or desert the Quran in any of its rights. Because whoever does so subjects to himself or herself to the complaint of the Prophet وسلم, to Allah. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّي إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا And the messenger had said, O oh my Lord, my people have taken the Qur'an a thing abandoned. How will you respond to that on the Day of Judgment? What type of answer will we have to Allah Azza wa Jal in return to this complaint from the Prophet Sallallahu Well, the answer is with each one of us, with regards to every right from the rights of the Qur'an. We ask Allah Azza wa to enable us to fulfill the rights of the Qur'an and to make the Qur'an a light in our, our hearts and a light that guides our ways in this life and an intercessor on the year after. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma aghfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat.